Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Today, we start our max difficulty game. The patch finally hit to add Rhyme back to the world, and that's what we're gonna use. Unfortunately, it's not in the spaced out size clusters. It's actually only available in the classic clusters, which means our main planetoid will be bigger. They've also re-added the individual planetoid traits. I'm really excited about this because it really adds an element of randomization to your gameplay. Part of the reason why I love Ani so much is every game is different. Speaking of randomization, we're going to be using random numbers to decide all sorts of things. For instance, when we are ready to pick up a new dupe out of the printing pod, or in this case, the features of our planetoid. Without further ado, number six it is. So the first thing we do is head over to our rhyme cluster, and then we would normally pound this six times because that's what the random number generator told us to do. But then I saw something I didn't like. That, and that was that our planetoid came up with geodormant. We can deal with a regular oil and metal pour and other things that just make the map more difficult. But one thing I did not want to deal with is geodormant. Because if the planet is geodormant, well, then I'm going to have less content to actually produce on that planetoid. So I want to get a map that is either standard or geoactive. I'd prefer it to be geoactive because then I would be able to produce a ton of content on taming each type of geyser and vent. So despite our best wishes on using RNG for planetoid selection, I think we're going to go ahead and just make sure that we have a planetoid that fits our bill. And I think this is the perfect one for us. So yes, it's geoactive, so we're going to have plenty of geysers and vents. We're going to be able to produce a lot of great content because of it. It also has some geodes with some rare materials in it, which is kind of a cool bonus. Unfortunately, it's going to have a lot of volcanic activity. We are going to need to make sure early there's no abyssalite breaks, otherwise Rhyme won't be cold for very long. And then finally, it has an alternate pod location. That could be bad too if we end up spawning right next to another biome that has the volcano in it, and then all of a sudden we're not growing crops, and this is the shortest series that I have put out. Some other features of this one is, looks like our swampy asteroid will have slime molds and medium boulders. Our tundra asteroid will have a subsurface ocean. That's kind of cool. And then finally, the marshy asteroid is metal poor. The rest have no unusual features. So without further ado, let's get this going. So after doing some thought, I decided to stick with digger, rancher, and researcher. Now having a digger dupe and a researcher dupe at the start is not abnormal. The rancher dupe, might be a little abnormal. But we're doing this because whenever we decide, hey, it is time for another duplicate, we're gonna roll the random number generator and then go into the printer pod. And whatever number that thing comes up with, that's the dupe we're picking up. Which means we may not actually have access to a rancher for a long, long time. I'm already nervous enough about getting a cook. A cook at least is only one skill point into any dupe and then they can learn cooking. But for ranching, you really just need a rancher. Additionally, our rancher will do a little bit of farming work, so it's all good. Now we'll respect RNG's last number with the number six and we'll re-roll these each six times. And here's what we ended up with. Joshua's not bad. Plus eight to excavation, mole hands, and a small bladder. I'll take small bladder. Unfortunately, our rancher is not great. Yeah, they have some digging and some cooking, which, hey, that might come in handy. They have a bottomless stomach. That was our worst fear. That means Nicola here is going to consume 2,500 calories per cycle. Thanks. Nicola. And then Jean is a researcher who really loves building things. Sorry, Jean, you're not going to get to build too many things. As for names, we heard a lot of great suggestions. I think we're still going to go with sort of a comic book feel. It seemed to get the most likes. So meet Thor, Black Panther, and Dr. Banner. Now, if you think of better names for dupes as they come through the printing pod, or these three dupes themselves, let me know in the comments below because you can always change a dupe name. And I kind of like the name that they gave the colony, but we need to put something about Max in there, so Max Paradise it is. And finally, without further ado, oh, the start of a new colony. Let's go ahead and pause it instantly, and then give it a zoom out. First thing I notice is the average temperature around here is about 15 degrees. There's a nice little algae patch up here. Our duplicates are disease prone, which means hypothermia 
it's gonna be a thing. You can see they start with a germ resistance of minus two. In addition, since they're under frankly depressing, they're gonna be stressed out all the time. We're gonna have to build like massage tables and stuff to keep these dupes chill. And then here's Black Panther's beautiful bottomless stomach consuming 2,500 calories per cycle. Now the water situation is a little grim. I only see these two pools. So I think we're gonna start off by using this pool here. I'm a little worried what this leads to though because I don't want all this water to drain. We're gonna be using it. Maybe eventually we can make a sort of water storage down here. But until then, I think we'll have to do with what we have. These are the first dig commands. As soon as they end up getting a little bit of sandstone, we'll be able to build ye old ladder system. And I think we'll just go straight down with it. And then we'll break into here and put a beautiful pitcher pump. Actually, that's too low. We need to go up a little bit higher. So we will break in right here. I think that's better. And why are we so concerned about that? Because every little bit matters. For instance, our dupes already have a 4% stress. So anytime they get wet or anything like that, they're going to get miserable. We'll also dig down a vent shaft. Oh yeah, the carbon dioxide is already doing a number. I think we'll go ahead and put in a few cots here. We'll build one to grow on. And then we'll build our bathroom somewhere around here. That way it's close enough to the water so it takes them less time to transport it while we still have the old bathrooms. And based on these floors, I think we'll go right here. This should be good. While the dupes continue doing their digging, we can actually go ahead and set things up. I think this will be good here. Two sinks. Two outhouses. And a couple of doors. Now this is a giant cavern and it's got a lot of carbon dioxide into it. So I want this carbon dioxide to kind of flow out and down. Before we start walling this in. I do want to get them that morale bonus sooner rather than later, but for right now, we'll leave this open. As a matter of fact, we probably need to dig down a little bit to make a sort of carbon sink. So we'll just put a few more ladders down and let all the carbon dioxide sink into here. Speaking of which, we have found plenty of more water. Now, is that double set of sand going to be okay? Or is that water going to leak out? Hmm. I know it would definitely bust if we, for instance, dug that out. So why don't we, while this stand and everything is still there, put a tile right there. Let's do it here too. Just notice that we found one mealwood seed. One. I'm hoping there's some more in here. Either way, we need to get research going rather quickly because we want to get something to plant that mealwood in. So I think we'll set research up right here. Perfect. The blocks are going in just fine. As Panther works on getting that next block in, hopefully it goes okay. Oh, beautiful. Let's get our priority set. We want four to do a lot of the building and digging. Panther is eventually going to be doing farming and ranching, so we'll just upvote him on both. And then Dr. Banner, yep, you're our researcher. In fact, why don't we go ahead and tell everybody they're not allowed to do researching at all other than Dr. Banner. But since there's not a lot of ranching and farming to do right now, when you're not doing that, you can do some supplying and some storing. All right, our power and research area is all cored out for us. Let's go ahead and pause this to make sure we do it right. All right, I think this looks good for the start. We put the wheel by the entrance because we want all the carbon dioxide that's being generated while the dupe is running on the wheel to go right down the shaft. So to kind of help that out, we'll send the manual generator right here. We left a little gap in here. That way, when we get our jumbo battery, we can put it right there in place. And we have enough room for our supercomputer when it's time. End of cycle one. We didn't get as much accomplished as we normally do because we needed to dig so far down to get to our water supply. We could have always put the water pump over here. I plan on using gravity and taking this water and dumping it into here eventually. So for us, it's better to use the lower water source. But one thing to say though, we are definitely not going to be in a hurry when it comes to running these dupes around because even a minor mishap could spell disaster. And Black Panther is eating again because of course he is. Speaking of which, let's go ahead and set up some priorities. All right, we set up four additional shifts and then we assigned two dupes per shift to start with. 
only because we have two wash basins and two outhouses, and this setup will get us to eight dupes before we need to start adding more shifts, or what's more likely, we'll start tripling and quadrupling up dupes on the shifts. Which brings up the question of total dupe count. I have no idea. The planetoid's gonna tell us that long before we are able to figure that out. If the planetoid can support 16 dupes, well, looks like we're having 16. If the planetoid can go as high as, say, 24, well, that would be preferred, because that way we'll have plenty of dupes to send off to other colonies. Unfortunately, it looks like this is going to turn from bad to worse because our outhouses aren't up and the dupes are ready to go to the bathroom. We got the first outhouse in, the second one's coming along just a minute too late. Uh, apparently, it wasn't just a minute too late because Thor decided to pee his pants instead of using the outhouse that is fully stocked and ready. Probably because Panther was using it. While we're getting science online, we're gonna go ahead and set up some digging. Primarily because we need to find the muck root. As for research itself, I think the first step is going to be basic farming. And since we're here, we might as well go right into meal prep. That way we can get our mess tables online. Oh wow, something I just realized. This is very cold dirt. We're gonna need to stop that right now. This is minus nine degrees. This is minus 1.3. We have ways to combat that. We'll start by putting some batteries here and then we'll just connect them up. And that way it'll warm this area up just a little bit because eventually we need to put crops there. Now for now, we're gonna be starting with mealwood. Unfortunately, we've only found three seeds. So we need to put down this mealwood as soon as possible everywhere where it's warm. We did find a blossom seed too, so we can do some berry blossoms here, which means we need to deconstruct this. So Panthers decided to eat inside the latrine, which it's great we have the latrine because it's giving us another plus one morale bonus. We have something dangerous here. It's a hatch. That hatch will eat everything that is important to us, specifically the nutrient bars and the muck root. So we need to get those moved as soon as possible. So here's our plan. Since we don't have any food storage yet, we're just gonna box this hatch in. We'll put a priority of six on that. Hopefully they will complete it before that hatch wakes up and starts getting hungry for nutrient bar. So we're gonna try to dig this area out relatively quickly to try to get all this food stuff moved. In the meantime, we've blocked the hatch in. That way when they wake up, they're not gonna try to eat our Nutrient bars, at least I hope so. I believe the hatch has to be sitting on the tile with the food in order to eat it. All right, it's new dupe time, and this is how it's gonna work. We're gonna take a look inside this printing pod, which I already have. And in this case, I really like Stinky. Stinky would be beautiful. It'd be a second rancher. It's another mouth to feed, but they have gourmet and they're a Ludite, not too shabby. But the only way we'll be able to pick up Stinky is if our old random number generator says we're allowed to pick duplicate number two. So back to power cell we go. And because we want a range of one, two, or three, the command is minimum one and maximum four. And let's see what we get. We get duplicate number three. So now we come back here and duplicate number three is Frankie. So we can decide whether or not we want Frankie or not. This is obviously not as hard as picking a dupe every single time, but Playing max difficulty and selecting every dupe every single time the pod comes up, that's not something that I believe would be very enjoyable. And in this case, we're going to pass on Frankie. We're going to have to make do with three dupes. Next up on research, I think we're going to go straight into power regulation. And since we're there, we're going to go grab internal combustion as well. And I believe after that, we're probably going to get into advanced research because I'd like to get smart batteries online as soon as possible so that way we can build a sort of power plant of sorts. All right, our ration boxes are completed. To start off, we're putting everything in there, but this brings up an important point. We need to get that grill online. That way we can cook the meal lice because our dupes eating meal lice raw has a chance of giving them food poisoning. And food poisoning at this difficulty is not as pleasant. But now that we have those ration boxes up, we could let down this wall and let this hatch out. But I don't think that's the best idea. We took away the two-door system because we wanted to put some additional planter boxes here. And then I realized something. The beautiful light that we're using from our printing pod to feed our berry blossoms, well, it goes three to the right and only two to the left. So for now, until we get our light bulbs, we're only going to be able to have four berry blossoms. I suppose it's time to get some oxygen online. 
Uh, everything's looking kind of not good. We'll put our beautiful oxygen diffuser here, somewhat centrally located. And then we'll put a storage bin right next to it for all the algae. There is some more mealwood up here and a berry blossom. So I think we're going to dig all this out, which will cause those seeds to drop. There's also a bunch of little scattered things in here too. Hopefully some more seeds. Now the disadvantage is it's right next to this ice, which is what's causing it to be so cold. And I would say we could insulate it in, but you'd have to insulate this entire area because it is just not contained. Looks like all that carbon dioxide has floated down, so I think we can go ahead and finally make the barracks into a room. That should be that. And also in our off time, we're going to be digging up. There's a bunch of other muckroot and everything like that over here. So we want to grab it. Loving this algae patch. We'll be able to survive off of oxygen diffusers for a long time. So here's one of those geodes. It has a bunch of gold amalgam and some diamond. This is beautiful. It's going to be a while before we have the skills to dig to it, but it still looks nice all the less. This area here is also pretty warm. It doesn't start dropping until around here. So we're going to dig out a little bit of this to try to put some more mealwood here. Look at us. We're already up to six mealwoods. That's depressing. Now, normally, our mealwood that gives us 200 calories in a cycle, because it produces 600 calorie meal lice over three cycles, and 200 calories per cycle, normally we were able to feed a dupe off of just five mealwoods. Well, because these are hungry boys, now it takes 10 mealwood per duplicate. That is insane. Hence the reason we're in a hurry to get down as much mealwood as possible. Now, berry blossoms can actually get a little lower. They can go down to 5 degrees versus the mealwood's 10 degrees. But I think we're going to throw a little blossom ranch in here. Since we're starting to talk about food, we're going to put our electric grill in a weird little position here. And the only reason we're putting it here is because it's kind of close to the ration box. Now, this is a very temporary setup because we have a lot of stuff we need to get online as quickly as possible before, you know, we starve to death. I hate running this huge copper run, but hey, could always be worse. Next up on the research, getting ready to build our mess hall, which means we need some flower pots and stuff. So why don't we get the ceiling light and then go into hanging pots? The ceiling light that way we can continue building that bristle blossom farm. All right, it's going to be a while before our blossom farm is fully populated, but I wanted to take a second and show you how it looks. Some of the key features, because we're using a planter box, is it actually raises the height of where the plant is. So by taking a look at the light map, you can see that's the reason why the lights are spaced out the way they are. If we were using the farm tiles, we could actually put two more plants per light because you could go down another tile. I don't necessarily want to put in farm tiles quite yet, I'd rather leave the natural material. This is quick, it's easy, it'll work. Another great feature is these two batteries here. You can see that over here it's minus 20. So we're using these two batteries as sort of a chill barrier. And it's, so far it's working. Temps in here range from 8 to 20. So it's not too bad. Now eventually we'll get some insulated tile and we'll have to put some insulated tile around our base rather quickly because we're going to be dependent on these crops for quite some time. But we finally finished our electric grill, which is great because it means we can start making pickled meal. So why go through the extra process of taking meal lice, turning it into pickled meal? Well, for a couple of reasons. Meal lice spoils in eight cycles. Pickled meal spoils in 32. So that's a huge bonus. But also, the act of cooking the food on the electric grill gets rid of all the food poisoning germs. Now all we have to do is go up into consumables and make sure that no one's eating meal lice. As a matter of fact, while we're here, we'll make sure they won't eat any bristle berries either. And then the last step was just to take panther and put him into grilling. Now hopefully, eventually, we will have a dupe that is a dedicated cook. That way, panther can get to the business of ranching and farming. For now... This will do nicely. In fact, we'll even give them their hats. Dupes love their hats. We've had a couple of rounds of dupes, but quite frankly, I don't want to take on any more dupes right now until we know we have the colony's food supply settled. Until then, taking a dupe right now would just be like shooting myself in the foot. All right, our first bristleberry has came, which means we can actually now select gristleberry and say forever. And it's with this point that we can actually figure out how many gristle berries it will take to actually feed our dupe. Now our standard dupe, in other words, everybody except for Black Panther and his bottomless stomach, needs 2,000 calories 
per cycle. And we can see that the gristleberry actually gives us 2,000 calories. So then just looking at the domestic growth, where it says in six cycles, it'll produce one bristleberry, that means we need six bristle blossoms per duplicate. So for three duplicates, that's 18 bristle blossom plants. Well, this is 15 here, plus we have four here, which gives us 19, which is perfect because the timing is always off a little bit because the 18 plants is only if, as soon as that bristle blossom was ready to harvest, a dupe came over and harvested and planted another one. It never happens like that, so having one extra is really nice. We're also gonna continue to grow this mealwood. We already have 72 tons of dirt. I'm not too concerned about finding dirt and having extra food on hand for when we do have another duplicate will be helpful. Now, all this is not taking into account the bottomless stomach dupe. It's not too big of a deal considering that we have some extra mealwoods going. Now, we might be able to core off some other areas for some future farming, for instance, over here. And we'll do that if the needle rises. I'm hoping to be into hatch ranching by then, but we'll see. Right now, it's definitely getting tight though. We're down to 8,400 calories. So we're gonna keep doing some digging in the background to try to find more muckroot until all this farming gets online. But I feel like we're there. I think our first few cycles were a success and the colony's not dead yet. Big win in my book. So here's the start of our blossoming new colony. I hope you enjoyed seeing it from the start. I know I'm looking forward to this series. I hope you are too, and I'll talk to you soon.